be a Sunday school teacher here. I met her and her children and husband and I met Brother Ben Bryant and all those who went from this tabernacle out there to the west to, to fellowship out there. What a wonderful reunion it was to get to see them all again. That's the reason I walked out of the Baptist church, see? For the very first time, I'd just been in there a little bit, and they, they asked me to ordain some women preachers. Well, I couldn't actually stay in the church. I said, I, I refuse to do it. And the pastor jerked me out. What's this? You're an elder. I said, Dr. Davis, with all due respect to the Baptist faith and everything that I have been ordained to, I did not know it. It was in the doctrine of the Baptist church to ordain women. That was one thing that was left out of it. And he said, that is the doctrine of this church. I said, sir, could I be excused tonight or would you answer some questions for me? He said, I'll answer your questions. That's your duty to be there. I said, it is, sir. That's right. I'm supposed to anticipate in anything this church does. I'm a line of duty, one of the local elders. And he said, uh, I said, could you explain to me why that in 1 Corinthians 14 or 15 there where Paul said, um, that your women keep silent in churches is not permitted them to speak. My little girl of eight years old, little Rebecca, and she's very spiritual. At home when people are talking about the gospel, she'll be in the other room listening to the door. She can ask me questions that I can't answer. So just eight years old. And when I, went, I heard her crying, I said, what's the matter, darling? She said, Daddy, tonight when you were leaving, you said for everybody to raise up their hands that want to be healed. And said, some poor old woman way back there, Daddy, she couldn't get up out of the stretcher. She's holding her hands up. She said, you couldn't see it. I said, did it make a difference where I seen it? If Jesus saw it. And she said, I know, Daddy, but she wanted you to see it. And she just cried. We couldn't hardly get her to go to sleep that night. And the next night, just as I walked to the platform and had a two or three people on the I felt something moving me. I looked around, there's an old lady that told her how long she'd been crippled with arthritis and where she'd been brought from, how she'd been in this rolling wheel uh, cart, not a chair, she had to lay flat. And the uh, Holy Spirit told her, stand on her feet, and she was healed. And when she did, little Rebecca was sitting behind her praying for her. <laughs> That's what had done it. And this girl that was healed the other night, I didn't know Rebecca was there because I couldn't even see it. But she said, Daddy, when you call, he, when you call those prayer cards, she came to cry and said she did, her number wasn't called. And little Rebecca was sitting right in behind the chair. I believe that's right, Sister Woods. You know, she's sitting right in behind the chair back there praying that God would help this poor girl. And there she had come across and she was healed right there. Looks like I'm going to have a woman preacher sure as the world in the family. <laughs> there it is. All right. <laughs> These women preachers, when they come in, they don't want to take their authority, but it's absolutely not permitted by God to do so. And let it, just while we're right on this subject here, this women see, and it, I said, if there be any man among you who's spiritual or a prophet, let him acknowledge that what I write is the commandments of the Lord. But if he's ignorant, just let him be ignorant. And that's why the, this tabernacle does not stand and ordain women preachers, women deacons, or anything for a woman to do as the office of this church. It's because this scripture lays here and it's naked.